ukuleles, reviews, and all that jazz. Keep watching. Yeah, hello, welcome back. It's got a ukulele review day. As ever, summary video review to the full written review that you'll always find linked below each of these review videos. Back on the website, loads more information about the instrument, beginner's tips, festival guide, club guide, all that kind of stuff too. Plus all the other reviews are listed there as well with their scores. Sorry to not be with you last week, the voice is still going a little bit. Uh, but also down there in those links below this video, you'll find uh, links where you can help out by chipping me a beer to help keep this site going. All that money goes back into this channel to get hold of instruments. Not for me, they all get given away eventually or given to charity because I don't take any money from the brands to do this like some reviewers do. I don't charge for reviews, they would be adverts. What's the point of that? So thank you very much to these people who've done that. It really keeps this site going. And you can also help me out by subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell symbol. You'll get notified of new stuff coming your way. Okay, yeah, all that jazz. Um, a few weeks ago, I looked at an instrument for the first time from France. Uh, an instrument from a brand called Caravelle Kitchen on the southwest coast of France. Uh, the Luthier brand of a uh, kind of hobby builder called uh, Mathieu Touré. Um, and I really rather liked it. It was a solid, card from solid uh, wood instrument. Um, so I was really delighted when he said, do you want to have a look at another one of mine that I know have been causing quite a bit of buzz about them? Let's just get straight into it. Uh, been a while since I've done a review. This is the Caravel Kitchen Jazz Manouche Elite, and it's a concert. And um, yeah, very, very distinctive. Manouche, French term for a style of gypsy jazz, guitar jazz, perhaps made most famous by players like Django Reinhardt. And that is what this is modeled on, because this is modeled on the Selma McAfee guitars made between the 30s and the 50s by French company Selma in partnership with Maca Ferry, uh, who made the guitars for Django Reinhardt that he made famous. And they're worth 20,000, 30,000 quid now if you can find one. So that's what this is modeled on. That's the style, the Manouche Jazz Concert. Um, I really rather like it. Um, and it's pretty authentic actually when we get into it. This is made of all solid woods. What we have is solid, AA grade spruce on the top in two pieces and solid Philippines mango on the back and sides. The back and sides, the back is, the sides are uh, book matched in two pieces. The back isn't, I think it would look better because mango is quite variable in color. So you'd get like a match of things like this. Okay, maybe you wouldn't because there's a cutaway. Um, but that that's a solid piece. That's a, not a big complaint, is it? And I love the contrast to it. And this is the Selma style, very, very square uh, with this distinctive uh, drop shoulder cutaway up on the top and square uh, fat base to the instrument. We'll come on to that sound hole in a minute because there's quite a bit of detail to get through on this one. And uh, very, very authentic looking. Flat top, not a car, not an arch top, which a lot of people are thinking when they come onto the bridge, which uses a uh, gold plated. Um, tailpiece here which holds the strings you'll need to get your boys book of knots sailors knots boy scout knots to work out how to do those they're surgeon knots on the end of the strings and the strings then pass over this floating bridge which is made of rosewood that bit floats it's compensated this bit these bits are fixed i believe and that sort of sits in it this mustache style very very authentic and um very very nice i really like it I really do like it. Um, the sound hole, this is a D-shaped sound hole, sometimes called the Grand Bouche. And uh, that is the sound hole style that was used by Selma and McAfee in the original guitars. After McAfee's partnership with Selma, st Selma stopped, uh, post, post, uh, 30s, post 40s, post 50s, Selma continued to make guitars with round sound holes as an alternative. Mattia at Caravel Kitchen makes both. Uh, he claims that this one is better suited for chord play, whereas the small round sound hole is more for melody, for finger picking melody lines, much tighter in response. Um, nice that there's a choice. 
I really like the D shape though because I think that really sets off the jazz look to this. The decoration is simple. We've got a dark edge binding strip around the top um, and then around the sound hole. I don't normally like laser etching, but he's done laser etching around the D. Um, and I think that really kind of works well to get that effect because it does look very authentic. And if you look closely, there's a little sailing ship in there. That's what a caravel is in the name. If you go back to my earlier reviews of the caravel kitchen, that explains where the name comes from. That's a really nice little touch. Inside, very, very tidy. Notch linings, thin little braces, not much more to say about that. Very tidy inside. And the body is finished in a Rubio oil, which is a food grade, non-toxic alternative to true oil. Very, very nicely done. Very, very tactile. Nice and smooth, no sharp edges anywhere. Just really nice to hold, albeit not gloss. Um, but nice, very nice. The neck is made from kaya wood. There's a joint in the heel, very hard to see. Really nice carving down here, rather like that heel. And no joint up here that I can find. Fairly rounded on the back and a fairly average um, nut width of 35mm 27G2A. More on that nut in a moment, but still it's comfortable enough. The fingerboard is made of ebony. There's some colour variation in it, but I said long ago that I'm not going to get too fussy about that because ebony is a scarce wood and we shouldn't be just throwing away bits of ebony just because they've got a bit of colour in them. But it is in very good condition, very authentic to the Selmas is this overhang over the edge of the D sound hole, which I really rather like. It is not edge bound, but it doesn't need to be because these are semi hemi fret ends. So he's shaped and rounded those fret ends before he fits them and then they don't reach the edge of the board. So no sharp fret ends at all. No, you can't feel them. So, so smooth. Position dots in pearl face out at 5, 7 and 10. You also get side dots which are really subtle, very hard to see, but just see them enough. Rather like that as well. 22 frets, loads of them, and 14 joints of the body. So very generous there but also a zero fret. Now the zero fret holds the string action, the nut behind holds the string spacing. I see some people say that that's a lazy approach to, to instrument making, and it certainly does make it hard if you want to change the action up here. I don't think it's lazy actually, and there are some very, very good builders like filed guitars use zero frets. Martin Carthy on his Martins specifies of it zero fret because it gives more tonal, um, equivalent makes makes the tonal sound of the open string sound like a fretted string very popular with jazz players and in fact the original Selma guitars had zero frets albeit they were steel strung so kind of authentic too I don't have a problem with that at all I rather like it that nut holding the string spacing is bone the headstock in this kind of like skinny arrow head shape the original Selmas were slot heads but I'm so glad he didn't put that on this because this is a concert it would look ridiculous I think it's faced in a very thin veneer of a darker wood uh, I'm not sure what that wood is um, but that's rather nice tuners rear facing friction pegs he says they're unbranded but looking at the mechanisms and the collars they are equivalent to Grover's, like the sort of stuff you can buy online that aren't Grover's, but cheaper. But they work just as well. Little black buttons, really like those. And he strung this with Martin M600 fluorocarbon strings, um, which are nice and light and thin. Um, strings that I use a lot, actually. Uh, but we'll come on to the sound in a moment. And the price for this... Well, luthier instruments, a price is just a guide because it depends on the spec, depends what wood types you've gone for. This one, 500 euros. I don't think that scares me at all. This is all handmade in France. This is not made on a, on a robotic production line in China. This is made in France by one person. And it's all solid wood, solid spruce, solid mango, really nice finish, great looks. Um, 500 euros, so what's that, about 475 quid, something like that. Doesn't scare me at all. There are cheaper ones not called Elite, which I think are made from the monocoque shape where he routes out a block and then puts a top on it. Um, but these ones, the Elites, uh, about 500, maybe a little bit more for some different woods, maybe a little bit less for some others. Either way, I don't think it's too bad at all. I think the build here is really good. You know it's handmade. I mean, there are one or two tiny little tooling marks in it. Not as many as the last one I looked at from Caravel Kitchen. The finishing on this is 
pretty impeccable. I can't, I can't really find anything wrong with it at all. I appreciate that that look style is not going to be for everybody, but if you like that jazz look, and I've already put some sneak peeks of this up, and know there's quite a few people who do really want these, um, it's very authentic looking. I like it. The first thing that struck me when I took this out is how light it is. It is like, there's nothing at all. 450 grams. It's so, it's like light as a feather. Thin and resonant. Good news. Let's have a play. I'm impressed so far. I've not really got any complaints. And I have been playing it a lot, so I'm hoping this is just going to stay in tune. C's gone a bit. That's a bright sound. These are bright strings I find. Volume, first of all. Wow. Really loud. God, it's got punch to it. Bang. I'm really not hitting that too hard. Really loud. The sustain. There. It's pretty good. You've got to listen for the sustain because the clarity of that brightness of the strings is really punching through. But actually I'm feeling it here, I'm feeling it in my chest. staccato I think that sustain is lower than I thought it was but that's not a huge complaint because if you're playing little jazz chord runs on this that's kind of what you want you know it is very bright spruce top a very thin body top um, a bit too bright for me personally Purely a subjective thing, mess around with strings, put Worth Browns on it or something like that, maybe even a Keeler's. You're going to brighten it, uh, mellow it up a bit. It's a little bit too zingy for me, purely subjective, not a criticism, Matthew. better strummed. I think it's a bit banjo sound picked. Mm. It plays really well. It's actually pretty comfortable to play. So light. Um, that's got a great punch to it. Um, strings I would mess around with just to mellow the tone down a bit. Purely subjective, as I keep saying. But it's very, very clear. Very, very good volume. Um, I think it is a strummer's... Look at that, what a great look. Um, really interesting instrument. The Caravel Kitchen Jazz Manouche Elite Concert. Solid spruce top, AA spruce top, solid mango back and sides. In this Selma McAfee look with the D shape. Sound hole also available with a round sound hole if you want a different sound and a different, slightly different look. 
500 euros. Um, <laughs> I know people have been looking forward to me looking at this one. I think this is very, very different. And um, it's just really, it does sound great as well. Um, yeah, this gets a recommendation. This is just a hobby builder who's self-taught. And he comes up with stuff like that. I mean, that's just some very, very clever people about it, aren't there? It makes me, makes me so jealous. I've got ham fists. I couldn't do anything like this. I really rather like that. Stop rambling, Barry. Right, okay, thank you very much for watching and your support. Sorry to miss you last week. I'm going to miss you next week as well, I'm afraid, because it is Mrs. God of Ukulele's birthday, and we are away for the weekend as a treat for her. I am then back, and I think I've got a run of about five or six that I've got to get through, and so it's going to be back to normal. Uh, the cold is still hanging around. I think loads of people around in this town have got it, and are passing on back and forth to each other. Some people have had it for six weeks. Horrible stuff going around. But as you can tell, I'm not coughing through this one, so I got through it. Thank you for your support. Look after yourself in the week ahead and others, and uh, I hope you take care. And I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye.